Thanks to Audible for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Oh my gosh, y'all. Thank you so much for all these gifts. Look at these shoes. Okay, so next, I asked all of y'all to guess baby's name. So we're gonna read through them now. Moses, okay. Uh, is my baby gonna let our people go? Okay, roll up on Pharaoh. It's kind of a Benjamin Button looking name, kind of old. Keisha, okay, um, it's cute. It's a little 80s, 90s for me, to be honest. Like my baby's gonna pop out with box braids. Aqua, uh, wow. It's, see, it's beautiful, it's pretty, but it's giving me a little bit of a magic city. It's giving me working at the pyramid tonight, you know what I'm saying? Just leave some stuff to the imagination. Olua Tosin Akindali. That? is beautiful. I'm not Nigerian though. Which one of y'all did Beyonce? We really only have one thing for sure in life. I mean, besides taxes and death. I mean, and there's heartbreak. Our names. Mm -hmm. It's your sense of self and belonging at the same time. It's that spark I get when I meet a fellow Evelyn. I mean, they're usually over 60 years old, but it's still exciting. Or when I find my name on a gift shop keychain. Wonder what that's like. Sometimes we choose our own names to align with our values or reinvent ourselves. And be honest, we all have preconceived notions about names and what type of person they're attached to. Eccentric celebrity kid names, down home country names, and of course, black ones. We can see you over there, trying to deny it, but tucked away in your brain are stereotypes about black sounding names. It's even been popularly satirized. Tavaria Smith King, Merrimack College. Tyle Royal, Smoochie Wallace, University of Miami. Desquarius Green Jr., University of Notre Dame. These assumptions are baked into our minds through the media, pop culture, our collective histories, and personal experiences. It's not innocent though. Your name is how the world perceives you. And when jobs, education, medical care, and social status is at stake, that perception comes at a price. So let's explore black naming conventions because the difference between Natasha and Sasha is less than you think. Oh, you thought I wouldn't bring it up, did you? No, I, I knew it was coming. Slavery. When it comes to black names in the Americas, you can't ignore the impact of chattel slavery and how people use names as a form of survival. And I don't know if y'all know this by now, but AZ is a complete nerd when it comes to ancestry records of any kind. And she found some powerful stuff. Ah yes, I do love a good ledger. When West Africans were sold into slavery, the ability to retain their names was largely inconsistent. There are some documents, like receipts, that show the sale of a person just named Simon. And then there are documents that show how misspellings of West African words became names. Someone from the Andoni tribe in Nigeria might be named Anthony. Beke from the Igbo tribe in Nigeria becomes Becky. Ooh, tell them about the ads. Wanted ads for runaway slaves in South Carolina indicate that many owners acknowledged that people weren't just going to go by their plantation names. The ads listed the person's proper name and their country name, the African name the enslaved person maintained. We'll link more information on West African names that survived the Middle Passage, but over time, the mixing of cultures, languages, and environments introduced different types of names to black communities. There are biblical names. With Christianity as the pervasive religion, it wasn't uncommon for people to choose names with religious significance. You have your Daniels and your Davids, which still sound pretty modern, but you also have Moses and Jedediah. Moesha is a version of the Hebrew Moses, amen? Meaning drawn out of the water. Preach. Oh, oh my God. Hi, ba hi baby. Dad? It's also important to note that although most slave owners in the US were Anglo-Saxon, these names were not white. They're Anglicized versions of Hebrew and Greek names. Oprah Winfrey's name was originally Orpa, a woman in the Book of Ruth, and Goliath's mom. Speaking of Abrahamic religions, Arabic names belong to some of the most iconic figures in black culture. Due to the efforts of the Nation of Islam, Dar al Islam movement, and other organizations, Islam became a well established force in black communities, renouncing the Christianity that had been used to legitimize American slavery. Malcolm X is arguably the most well known black American Muslim, and the X was his way to guarantee that he didn't share a last name with the slave owner. 
When he left the Nation of Islam and began to practice Sunni Islam, he changed his name to El Haj Malik El Shabazz. I suppose nobody in here ever heard of Cassius Clay. A man has the right to change his name to whatever he wants to change it to. His mama named Clay, I'm gonna call him Clay. Mm -hmm. Cassius Clay Jr. becomes Muhammad Ali, and Ferdinand Louis Alcindor Jr. becomes Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Then you have Arabic influence. You may not practice Islam, but it's just another cultural bucket to draw from. Queen Latifah and her on-screen character, Khadijah. And if you know somebody named Aisha, that ain't nothing but some Arabic. People often combine names with African origin with those of Arabic origin as a way to completely renounce what some call a slave name. It's how you got Asada Shakur. With growing pan-African politics, black Americans found commonality between their struggles and freedom fighters in African nations. A Stokely Carmichael becoming a Kwame Ture was a political statement. And if you weren't marching in the streets, remember Roots hit televisions across the country in 1977, and its iconic scene reawakened the desire to give children African or African-sounding names. Your name is Toby. I want to hear you say it. You're going to learn to say your name. Let me hear you say it. What's your name? Kunta. Ooh! Anansi Asad. I can dig it. Ooh, Malik Saeed Akan. That's powerful. Giving me black melanated king. Amala Anaya. Giving me regal African princess vibes. Wakanda. What's always been interesting to me is how Swahili has been incorporated into black culture. While East African nations were not involved in the transatlantic slave trade, Pan-African politics gave the gift of even more names. Every Imani, Jabari, and Nia, Swahili. Then you just have names that are black, literally, ebony. But let's be real. There are certain names you perceive to be blacker than others. And that ain't nothing but some creolization. Some what? Let's say les bon temps roulet. Who? Vibrant Creole culture in Louisiana introduced French into black naming trends, and it spread. We don't know how or why, but by the 1960s, French names were so commonly used in black communities that it's almost impossible for me to imagine a white Monique, or like a white Antoine. Nope, I tried, drawing a blank. You have your typical French names like Andre, but black folks would add prefixes using pieces of the French language like le, la, Duh. And voila, DeAndre. You can even sprinkle it on non-French names. Lawanda, Lissandra, DeMarcus, Deshaun. Ah, now things get interesting. Because while it's cool to understand the other cultures and languages names come from, there's also beauty in making something up. It's the ultimate expression of freedom. Your dad's name is Raymond, your mom's name is Yvonne. So boom, happy birthday, Rayvon. There's Tyrese, which is a completely unique creation with no historical origin and perfect for singing slow jams in the rain. Shaquille, as in O'Neal, is a creative respelling of an Arabic name. His mom probably just wanted to be a little bit different. You know, sometimes you want to stand out. And who gets to decide how this is spelled in our alphabet anyway? Societies look down on some spellings, but not others, when really it's just creative use of English. Like Meta World Peace, born Ron Artest. Sometimes what's in a name is just your imagination. So where does AZ come from? Well, my father was inspired by the Pan-African movement mm -hmm. um, in South Africa, where the people wanted to rename South Africa Azania. Um, but he was reading it in a magazine, so he didn't know how to say it, so he said Azania. Mm -hmm. And then my mom heard that and said, nah, it sounds like a flower. <laughs> so then they went with Azania, and then when they told my grandparents, like, this is her name, they were like, that's a big name for a little baby. So they started calling me AZ, and that's how I got the nickname AZ. Then as I got older, people didn't really want to learn my name. They acted like it was kind of a hassle. So I just started going by my nickname. Well, okay, so I'm not really tied to like the origin, like etymology of mm -hmm. my name. I don't really know much about that. All I know is that my mom used to be a teacher and I am named after her favorite student. So shout out to you, Evelyn, the original Evelyn. It's a lifestyle.
They turned out great. <laughs> and now for a rapid fire list of names you thought were super black because stereotypes. We forgive you. Quintrell, an 11th century name from Cornwall, England. Uh, all right, um, wh what is this? Terrell, hut hut, performs masculinity. It's French. You call this football? Back in my day, hmm. Darnell, not just for uncles at the cookout, but also a group of people in the medieval ages who grew a plant called Darnell. Natasha, it's Slavic. Is this vodka? Yeah, Tyrone was a kingdom in Gaelic Ireland. Whoa, really? Really? Whew, and we haven't even scratched the surface of nicknames, which has an even richer history. We'll link more information in the show notes. But why does any of this matter? For the same reason some people cringe at the fact that her name is Hennessy. There are real and perceived negative impacts associated with names that don't fit the dominant culture, which can create academic, professional, social, and cultural disadvantages. Researchers understand that we are imaginative people, and names send a signal that makes us imagine people before we ever meet them. There have been studies that explore how racism and classism combine to encourage hiring bias in the workplace. And if people in positions of power won't even look past your name to learn how much experience you have and the value you could add to the company, that's a problem. While we want to debunk the myth that most black names are made up, we also deserve to celebrate the creativity that is a completely unique name. At the very least, we deserve to have our names deemed unusual or uncommon versus bound for dysfunction and economic disadvantage. We choose to celebrate black culture by acknowledging and respecting where we come from and the regional, cultural, historical, and political reasons we are who we are. So tell us the story behind your name. Share this video with your Uncle Darnell. We'd like to thank Audible for supporting PBS. Audible's selection of audiobooks include Audible Originals, audio titles created by storytellers from around the literary world. For example, Genius Dialogues, a conversation with the country's most compelling scientists, educators, and artists. Visit audible.com slash say it loud or text say it loud to 500, 500 to learn more. Members own their books and can access them at any time. So to learn more, visit audible.com slash say it loud or text say it loud to 500, 500. Click here to watch previous episodes of Say It Loud. Click here to watch our friend Danielle over at Origin of Everything explain why middle names exist. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.